Hey guys, uh, back with you, and this one's going to be uh, about doing a uh, airbrush job on a steam locomotive. This uh, this is that EM1 that I posted uh, probably a couple months ago. It uh, has a soundtrack tsunami uh, decoder in it, and I'm going to spend a few minutes just uh, going over some of the techniques and type of paint that I use, and. Uh, what I use for uh, tools on this uh, as well. So the first thing that, I, uh, that I've that i got, uh, to me, this is probably one of my best investments so far, was a uh, Posh Talon uh, double action airbrush. And it's got the uh, uh, paint holder right on top of it. Um, that's a personal preference thing. I, I like having my uh, can right on top. And uh, it allows really for uh, easy cleaning of the, uh, of the tool once I'm done. And uh, just the daily care of this tool, uh, whenever I use it, uh, I, once I'm done uh, painting, I uh, take the needle out of it, uh, wash it down with uh, isopropyl alcohol, run a little bit of uh, acetone through the gun, and uh, this thing should really last me my lifetime uh, uh, by taking care of it that way. Um, as far as paints that I'm going to be using today on this locomotive, I'm going to be using a... Uh, uh, poly acrylic uh, engine black, which I've got ready. I'm also going to be using uh, uh, grimy black and also uh, tarnished black. And then I have a mixture of all three of those, which I come back and just highlight the locomotive with. And then also for the uh, under running gear and for the areas of the locomotive. Um, that have uh, significant amounts of uh, steam release from them, such as the uh, steam dome here, uh, down around the uh, cylinders here, uh, and various other appliances. What I'll do is I'll come back and I'll highlight those areas with uh, white, uh, and that way it kind of gives like that uh, scaly white effect that you see a lot of uh, that you see a lot of in. Um, pictures of these older locomotives. Um, I'm not going to be going for a uh, heavily abused locomotive. Uh, these locomotives were uh, really well uh, kept uh, and they were a late model. I think uh, B&O got these sometime in the mid 40s during World War II if I'm not mistaken. And even when they were displaced from um, service uh, in uh, in and around Maryland and on the main line I think they got displaced up to, into uh, near Toledo working on some of the uh, coal branches up there and even then they were really well maintained into like the 50s so um, for this I'm really going for uh, subtlety um, give it a more realistic uh, uh, appearance used but not abused and uh and again uh, these these machines were really well taken care of I, I can't find any that where you see these things as rusted hulks uh like uh, some other steam locomotives were uh, late in their career um these as i say they were well taken care of so my paint job is going to try to reflect that anyways guys um uh follow along and uh, I'm going to speed up as I go through the uh, paint process. There'll be some time where I just won't say anything and, uh, and uh, I'll uh, fast forward through it. And then when I come to uh, using a different type of technique or paint, I'll, uh, I'll come back to you and let you know when that is. All right, guys, uh, here we go. The first part is going to be using the uh, engine black. And I'm going to just give a light overspray of the whole locomotive with it. Here we go. So uh, I've got most of that uh, 
first coat of uh, engine black on, um, taking most of that uh, shiny newness off the model. And next thing I'm going to do, just to kind of speed the process along, is just take my uh, wife's hair dryer and uh, give it a little bit of uh, heat just to uh, help that uh, uh, polyscale paint dry. Uh, just a minute or two is all you need, and then I'll uh, be going on to the next coat. So uh, the next tool I've got is my wife's hair dryer. Here we go. All right, guys, uh, the next uh, uh, part that I'm going to be doing is just a uh, another overspray. Um, again, uh, light coats, and I usually thin about uh, uh, about three parts paint and about uh, five parts water. Uh, that's about the ratio I use. If I'm going to be going thinner, then obviously, uh, you know, instead of three to five, I might go um, one to four or even one to five. Um, just uh, make sure that I don't cover up uh, too much of that base uh, black that I put on there. Again, I'm just going for a slight weathering effect. And uh, this next coat is a, a mixture of um, a little bit of rust, a little bit of uh, earth tone, uh, black, gray, and white. Uh, and again, I just mix it to what I think it looks right. And uh, this is just going to be uh, more of almost like a streaking effect on certain parts. And then I'm going to come back and... Uh, uh, do the uh, running gear and the steam chest uh, on the next uh, couple parts. So uh, there's usually at least four to six uh, different uh, applications that I do on a steam locomotive. So uh, here we go. So on this one guys I'm going to be uh, applying a little bit of that white and gray 
and I'm going to be lightening up the uh, running gear and uh, steam chests and various other appliances that steam usually came out of on these locomotives. So uh, again, uh, just a little bit of white, usually uh, reefer, reefer white and uh, maybe like CSX gray mixed together a little bit. Um, and again, it's just a very, uh, very light wash just to give it an effect underneath. Okay, so this next part is uh, applying the uh, Bragdon uh, dust, and I've got a couple different colors here on my uh, on my sheet, and primarily I'm going to be using like this uh, black coal type of powder. I'm going to use that along the top. I might mix in like a little bit of this uh, iron oxide. It's like a reddish, dark red brown color. A little bit of a more typical brown. And then I'll uh, apply like a gray just to enhance the, uh, the uh, white scaling here along the uh, uh, steam and pipe fittings. So uh, here we go. And with this stuff, a lot, a little goes a long ways. Um, I've found that you do not need to add a lot in order to get the uh, desired effect. But it really, in combination with the uh, airbrush, just makes a, a locomotive look fantastic. Uh, I'm not an expert. I just uh, basically apply it to uh, what I think looks good and also on pictures that I've seen. And um, when I bring these down to the local club or to uh, my friend's uh, railroad where we uh, operate on, uh, I get a lot of positive feedback on it. And again, uh, I'm not an expert in this. I just, again, go by what my eyeballs tell me. And I'm going to go for like a little bit of that brownish tone color around the uh, sand dome. Those were typically like you would see dust and whatnot left over from that. And then uh, along the top is where these uh, locomotives were typically sootiest from the uh, locomotive uh, smokestack. So I'll make sure that the dark, darker is typically seems to be what was up on top and then uh, lighter underneath. And I tend to brush down to give it a, a streaking effect. Um, when I've looked closely at photographs or a lot of photographs of, uh, of those steam locomotives, they uh, tended to have a lot of the streaking type of effect. Water uh, and steam uh, condens or con condenses and then uh, kind of drips down the uh, side of the locomotive. So that's what I'm trying to, that's typically the effect I'm trying to go for.
So uh, again, just a little bit of streaking and then uh, using like the rust and uh, iron oxide type of colors and then I go back over with the black um, coal type of uh, dust and it kind of gives it a nice, uh, gives it a real nice appearance. Let me uh, zoom in on that and just show you guys. I try to avoid, uh, one thing I do try to do is avoid getting that dust um, down and around the uh, running gear. Uh, just for the fact that it can um, get in and uh, bind in the uh, driving mechanism and I want to try to avoid that. So um, again, used, not abused, and uh, you know, uh, I figure I usually spend uh, on a locomotive an hour or so and I've been doing this for a while and I think that just looks really sharp and uh, next thing I'm gonna do is uh, go and clean the uh, locomotive wheels both the tender and on the locomotive and uh, get this thing on the track and we'll uh, give it a look-see uh, going up and down the rails but uh, I think that's a pretty sharp looking locomotive I hope you do too alright guys uh, back with you in a few minutes So we've got the uh, EM1 all weathered, powdered up, ready to go back on the track, uh, got the wheels cleaned. And I think it really looks sharp. The, uh, the weathering is I brought really out all those details, made them pop, gives them definition. And uh, for a little bit of time spent, uh, I think it's really worth the effort and the end result. Uh, one thing to remember is there's really no perfect way to do it. Uh, I just started doing it, and over time, after quite a few models, uh, I just kind of uh, get an idea for what I think looks right. And again, you can't really go wrong. Uh, the key to using that airbrush is really to uh, build it up in layers, and then when you do those adhesive chalks or powders, uh, there's no uh, right or wrong way either. It's just... Uh, you know putting some on and if you put a little bit too much on well uh, brush it off and start over again uh, and you'll eventually uh, wind up uh, with a technique and um, a result that uh, suits what you like so anyways uh, hope you enjoy uh, here we go we'll give it a little uh, run back and forth take care guys see you soon